when you look at some of the work of like Michelle Alexander and she talks about the war on drugs, the reality is particularly when you look at drug related crimes, you have at the same rate it's happening in the black community as it's happening in the white community and other communities of color, but the black community has been, and the Latino community increasingly, has been targeted specifically around this kind of prison industrial complex. So you have policies like stop and frisk that target these communities. And given it, give the perspective that crime is proliferating at higher rates in those communities and it's not the case. What that leads to seeing this in the news, seeing it portrayed in the media, is that folks in the communities oftentimes, and folks who work in particular institutions, feel that it's important to be tough in crime. They feel that youth in the, in the community have kind of, are running rampant and out of control and need to be controlled. And the reality is that isn't the case. There is, the, the reality is that there's a systematic institutional forces that are making things look a particular kind of way. They're, they're making it look as if this group of individuals is involved in more criminal activity and they aren't. So what that kind of requires for folks who are leading the way in institutions and just folks in the community is to begin to take a different perspective at looking at what they hear about crime and recognizing that the research shows that black and brown communities are not committing higher rates of uh, criminality than folks in the white community. And what that means is we kind of have to switch our approach on this notion of being tough on crime and, you know, holding these youth accountable. And our approach has to begin to swing to holding institutions accountable and also giving youth what I, what I like to call alternatives to incarceration. So generally speaking, when, you, when I think about alternatives to incarceration, there's two pieces um, that I think are very important. So those pieces are trauma-informed care and positive youth development. So trauma-informed care gives, what that does is it takes a look at what traumas this person experiences. Is it, is it an educational problem? Is it a mental health problem? Is it a family problem? What's at issue here that's causing a person to maybe engage in behavior that we deem um, unproductive? And then also positive youth development comes in after you've assessed what's at the root of this particular behavior, what trauma is at the root of this behavior. Positive youth development says, let's take a look at this person's gifts and skills and turn some of this trauma into a vehicle that they can express themselves in a positive way, utilizing whatever their particular gifts, talents, and strengths are. So I think at root for any alternative to incarceration is both positive youth development and trauma-informed care. They kind of work hand in hand, identifying and, ass and assessing the issue or the dilemma and also partnering with the solution to transform it. Now, in terms of specifics in regards to alternatives to incarceration, there's such a variety of programs that exist out there that are very cost effective, particularly when you talk about the cost of incarceration, but are highly underutilized. So there's approaches that um, put youth in um, wilderness programs where they spend time outside of, of their, their particular community. There's therapeutic models. There's also models of engaging youth in more theatrical performance. Um, so there's just a tremendous amount of alternative to incarceration programs that exist that aren't getting the funding focus and kind of highlighting that they need. Um, recently, the federal government has begun to take a closer look at what programs are um, succeeding. And I think when you look at what happens with Raise the Age and the shift in youth justice in New York State, we're hoping that alternative incarceration models become the ways of the future. Raise the Age New York is a campaign that supports raising the age of criminal responsibility for children in New York to improve outcomes for both children and public safety. For more information on Raise the Age New York, visit their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter.